Uh, good day, everyone. We will talk about bedside lung function test today. Whenever I talk anything on academics, I put a big salute to the legendary teacher of two centuries, Professor Ravi Shankar. So when we go this, what is what? This is the tidal volume. This is the inspiratory reserve volume. Inspiratory reserve volume plus inspiratory tidal volume. This tidal volume plus inspiratory reserve volume is inspiratory capacity. Now we have vital capacity. This is expiratory reserve volume. This is residual volume. After complete blow up, this is there. So I am not going into the details of it. ERV plus RV is FRC, tidal volume. This is inspiratory reserve volume and this is inspiratory capacity. So can we be assessed? Can it be assessed bedside? What are the various tests and techniques available for this? What we have commonly used is Sabrasess test. I am not very sure of the spelling and the pronunciation of this. Sabrasess, I always copy down. Ask the patient to take a deep breath. Hold it as long as possible and if it is able to hold it more than 30 seconds, then it is normal. Then if it is less than 16 seconds, decrease if we see. Now ask the patient to take a deep breath and hold it like that. If he is able to do it more than 30 seconds, then it is normal. This is what is called the breath holding test of savages. See there are small breaths, breath holding, counting again. There may be signs of air hunger which comes to normal breath. The dip in the saturation after 20 seconds in holding in smokers is an important thing. If you are a smoker, if you have a pulse oximeter also, when you are doing this test, you may get a dip in saturation, especially in smokers. Now we have Sabras' test of breath holding. More than 30 seconds, okay. Now we go to Snyder's match blowing test. Now the mouth is wide open. Ah, the match is held at 15 centimeters. The chin is supported. There is no head tilting like this. The match stick and mouth at the same level. No big air movement. You should switch off the fans and all. And you should not go outside. Lighted match stick to be held 15 centimeters away from the patient mouth. Blow out without pursing lips. Parse Should blow like this. FEV1 is 1.6 liters. Okay, match off. More than 60 liters MBB. If FEV1 is less than 1 liter, match will be off is only in 8 centimeters. 6 inches or more than 15 centimeters, the maximum breathing capacity is more than 16 liters. This maximum breathing capacity is an older name of maximum voluntary ventilation. Now we can see the different things. Now you see I am doing this. I am trying to have a chin rest and a match at around, now it is around 20 or 18 centimeters. I am trying to do this now. You can see here, I am holding the rest and the mouth is open. And I am not doing the first steps. You see here? I am not doing the first so, steps. I am huh? not doing the first steps. I am trying again. And pushing it some more. And I am not able to do it. I am pushing it some more to 12 cm. And uh, still I am not doing it. I am some more again. Actually we should not repeat. We should wake up for one minute. So, I take a video I am doing this. And now we can see this. this the job at around it. Now this is what is this? Falls and then. There is one more thing called Debono's whistle test. This is the Debono's whistle. It, if you blow it, it will whistle. The noise will come. And as soon as you change this, and at where the whistle will stop, you can read the PFR. Peak expiratory flow rate. This peak expiratory flow rate is the maximal flow rate generated during a forceful expiration after a full lung inspiration. 
It is not necessary to blow out as long as possible in contrast to a spirometry test. An expiration of one second is second. Now you see PFR means <sighs> that's all. But if you are going to do spirometry, <sighs> continuously shut the door. Blow as long as possible in contrast to a spirometry. Here we don't need to do. It is only one second is sufficient. Now 300 to 500 liters. Now you see I'm doing here. This is the peak expiratory this flow meter. PFR. You can see the values here 100, 150, 200. This red bobbin will move if you yes. blow towards now this. And exactly we can calibrate how much is the peak expiratory flow rate of the patient. Now I'm going to do. Yes, I'm going to take a deep breath. I'm blowing. And said I have blown now. Now I am showing it around 500 liters per minute. The so normal is normal. more than 300 liters per minute. Yes, if it is less is than normal. 150 or yeah, if it normal. is less than 200, then. So green and Berowitz cough test. Observe for ability of cough, strength and effectiveness. He is able to good cough. Strength is there means yes, we are having an adequate respiratory reserve. Pulmonary wet, not very, cough is not very strengthy, strong, and it is having some sputum. Yes, these are all prone candidates for some post-operative complications. Inadequate cough means FVC is less than 20 ml, CPFR is less than 200 liters per minute. What was my PFR? It was 500 plus. Now we have watch and stethoscope test. What all we have seen now? Sabrasas, sniders, match blowing, cough test, all these things. Now we have seen PEFR, we have seen. Watch and stethoscope test. Forced expiration. You do a forced expiration. And keep a stethoscope in the truck here. It should finish. Your expiration should finish within 3 seconds or 4 seconds. It should go on. Prolong means there is some obstruction. Now we can see. Just keep a stethoscope and keep a stopwatch and ask him to do forced expiration. Very simple test. I have finished within four seconds. Now the ability to talk constantly or time to flight of tasks. Sometimes, no, this is very difficult in exams. Ability to talk constantly. You're going on talking for some other purpose. Climb to flight of stairs. Then it is okay. FE1 is 3.2 liters, approximately 80% of your FEV1. See here, two flights. Counting test. After a deep breath, you take a deep breath and start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Up to 30 if you are able to do without taking breath, then you are okay. This is a simple counting test. Now we have bedside spirometry. We have got this machine. Bedside spirometry. Now you see. This is the pocket spirometer. pocket spirometer. We have to switch it, it on. on. It now, if you vehicle. switch on, now it will come like 50. This 50 must be increased to 2 kilos. Whatever 52, our weight, 53, 54, 55, 56. For example, now 70 kilos. 70 okay, kilos. then enter. Then enter. Then it then is showing 175 down. centimeters yes, as height. Enter. Now enter. enter. Then you enter again. Then one enter. Again enter. Now then it is showing the blow now. Okay. Blowing. Now you now keep you it like this. this possible thing and Take a deep blowing. breath. <laughs> and blow like this. Now, the, see the difference now it will show you the values. Now the, my FE1 is 2 liters. And FE1 by FEC is 82%. It is, this is absolutely normal. Okay. BP blow and keep. Keep a spigmometer blow test. Endurance test. Patient is asked to blow and raise a column of mercury up to 40 to 50 millimeters. And how many seconds you are able to hold that level? Your BP apparatus is there. Push, push the BP up to 50 millimeters and keep it. How many seconds you are able to do? 50, 50 is considered normal. Now we can see here. This is the BP apparatus. I am blowing it down. The mercury column is standing as 50. Now I am going to start it. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Seconds, 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 seconds. 
I am able to keep this around between 40 to 50 here. I am blowing from here. Ability to, yes, that's somewhat moving. I am not taking any breath here. Now uh, 20 seconds, 21 seconds, 22 seconds, it's going on. So my thing is more than 25, 27, 29. Now we will wait because it is 50, 50 is normal. 50 millimeters, 50 seconds is absolutely normal. So it's, I am going around 40, 41, 42. Yes, I, I, just, I just cannot do above 44 or something like that. So it is around 50 millimeters. I am able to do till 43 seconds, which is near normal. Now there are a lot of other things. We can put a pulse rate and a saturation. Simple test. Bedside ultrasound is there. We can put an ultrasound here and check the movement of the diaphragm and see the pleural space. These are also our bedside lung function tests. Slowly coming up. No smoking, no alcohol, no severe exercise. Don't repeat the test immediately. Wait for a one or two minutes or preferably three to five minutes. Substitute. Bedside lung function test is a substitute. Maybe alternate. There are a lot of studies which say yes, comparative study between standard pulmonary test and standard spirometry and stable COPD patients. Yes, they are almost equal. The accuracy of a handheld portal. There are a lot of studies here. Yes, they say yes. Don't miss the main story. That is very important. You just see the patient. Patient is breathing at 12 to 15 minutes per minute. Usually undervalued or assessed paranoia. We don't see only. We start to blow. Patient is breathing at a rate of 20, 25 per minute. Why do you want the patient to blow now? Do a Snyder's test. Do a Sabra's test. All these things are not needed when you have a patient breathing at a rate of 25 per minute. You need to have other clinical parameters. This is amla in the palm. They say it's very clear. If you keep an amla in the palm, it's very clear. That is a Tamil saying there. Now, if the patient has got a nasal flaring, if he has got a tracheal tug and a rib retraction, paradoxical breathing, all these things are there very clear. You don't need to have testing and all. Never forget the heart. He is not able to do means that doesn't mean his lungs is not okay. He may have a diastolic failure or a systolic failure. Never forget the heart. So, Snyder's, Sabrasus, cough, auscultation for 3 to 5 seconds, count more than 30, PEFR more than 300 liters per minute, spirometry PEF1, FEV1 and FVC. See the look at the patient and think about the heart. Thank you all.